Midway through the 20th century, humanity, still recovering from the most devastating military conflict in its history, was already fully engaged in a new global battle, a race for technological superiority. Out of the ashes of the World War came a generation of dreamers who believed that anything was within reach of human ingenuity. Having conquered their planet, they've now set their sights on space, the true final frontier. When I was growing up, what got me first interested or first thing that I remember about astronomy was, was Sputnik. When I heard the beeping on the radio, you know, it was the, the beginning of the space race. Sputnik, of course, was a really sobering thing for our nation. Our charismatic president, John F. Kennedy, you know, declared that we were going to the moon and uh, clearly implied that this nation intended to demonstrate its superiority in the technical and engineering sphere and that we were going forth into space. In this decade, we shall make up and move ahead. While these seemingly fantastic events unfolded on the pages of daily publications, radio and TV broadcasts, captivating imaginations of millions, our story, like many other great ones, had rather humble beginnings. It all started on a sunny Southern California day in a dusty garage in Gardena where Tom Johnson, an amateur astronomer, an electrical engineer, and the owner of successful Valor Electronics was meticulously grinding his first telescope mirror blank. In a sudden flash of genius, Tom realized the potential hidden in a piece of polished glass before him. He knew that in his hands, he held a key to bringing powerful astronomical devices to millions of inquisitive minds around the world, to anyone who ever looked up in the night sky in awe and wonder. And just like that, the idea of Celestron was born. He bought one for his children, and he became interested and started experimenting after reading a lot of articles how to build telescopes, and so he made the most difficult ones. <laughs> I contacted Sky and Tell, whom I had subscribed to their magazine, to find out if they would be interested in publishing a series of articles on how to make an 18 and 3 quarter inch cast grain telescope. They said no, they weren't interested. After it's all finished, let us see hear what you have done, and maybe we'll publish on it. Determined to complete this extremely challenging project, Tom Johnson built an 18-inch Cassegrain telescope utilizing only a home-built mirror grinding machine and a highly sensitive wavefront accuracy test method of his own creation. And that, that it, to me, is uh, you know, just a phenomenal talent, skill, vision. Um, to have, to be able to build machines that could make parts, very precise optical component parts, and then determine a way to test it. There are machines that you could use for testing now that are millions of dollars, and they're not any more accurate than what Tom was doing back in 1960. Tom's 18-inch telescope had its first public appearance at the Los Angeles Astronomical Star Party on July 28, 1962 where it received rave reviews from the members. People that were relatively enthralled by Johnny come lately in the telescope field who could make an 18 and 3 quarter inch Cassegrain telescope and get it to working. I did send off the plans and the progress report to Sky and Tell and I get a note back saying they wanted to publish the article after all. In March 1963, a cover article about this revolutionary new telescope was finally published in the Sky and Telescope magazine. 
generating a tremendous response from the readers. This success solidified Tom's vision for Celestron as a serious telescope-making business. Let's digress for a second and look at what really makes a telescope more or less desirable. In a nutshell, there are two main characteristics that astronomers are after. The aperture and the focal length. The aperture is the diameter of the telescope's lens or mirror. It is the single most important factor in choosing a telescope. It contributes to the telescope's prime function, to collect light. At any given magnification, the larger the aperture, the better the image will be. The focal length is the distance that light needs to travel inside of the optical tube. The longer the focal length of the telescope, the more power or magnification it is capable of producing. Traditional refractor telescopes, which can trace their history back to the days of Galileo, are the least compact. With refractors, larger focal length can only be achieved by extending the size of the optical tube itself. The Cassegrain design, utilized by Tom Johnson in his 18-inch model, used a series of mirrors to fold the optical path and drastically reduce the size of a telescope while maintaining the same focal length. Unfortunately, despite achieving desired portability and light-gathering power, this design had one major flaw, a distortion known as spherical aberration that rendered a Cassegrain telescope useless as a high-quality imaging device. The schmidt cassegrain configuration was much superior to the other types of cassegrains. I figured out how I should modify the optics of this 18 3 quarter to make it a schmidt cassegrain which I proceeded to do. The schmidt cassegrain design is named after optician Bernard Schmidt, who in the 1920s devised a method of eliminating spherical aberration by means of a specialized lens known as a Schmidt corrector. Little did I know, an amateur could not make the Schmidt Cassegrain. The optics were far too complicated, but I didn't let that bother me. Tom continued perfecting his techniques. And finally, in 1963, in what became a technological breakthrough in modern telescope making, he devised a way to produce Schmidt corrector plates of flawless quality by a completely new method at a fraction of the time and cost it took to make them in the past. The theory was there, everyone knew, uh, you know, he didn't invent a new type of optical system, but he had the capability and the ingenuity of developing machines that could grind optics within a thousandth of an inch, which is remarkable. These are not computerized machines back then. It was, it was a skill, it was a craft that he developed in his spare time as a hobby while he was building a successful electronics company. With the resources of a flourishing electronics business at his disposal, Tom continued the relentless pursuit of his passion.